Well guys, back at it here at the shop. Uh, on these LS motors, I don't know who the engineer was, but man, I'd sure like to kick them in the you-know-whats. So, you see this bolt hole right here? The motor's kind of leaned to the side. So this bolt hole right here, they have a, a stud deal like this that's in holding the bell housing to the motor, okay? And then they have another nut on top of that that, uh, let me get you in there for a second, hold on. I had to loosen the nut a little bit. They have another nut that holds a bracket to the fuel injection lines that come up through here to the front of the motor that actually tie in to these fuel lines. Okay, well, the way they designed the whole firewall, you have like literally this much room by this much room and to get to this, which on the transmission, there's a rib that runs right across, right next to it. So you got the rib, you got the bracket holding the fuel lines on. It took me an hour and a half to get this one nut off of the back of that truck. And you're talking tippy of your fingers with a wrench, barely move a little quarter inch at a time, and you drop the wrench, you have to get down, go get it, get back up. Oh my God, I about was to drill a hole through the firewall and take this thing out. Okay, so hour and a half to get the nut off for me. If that wasn't bad enough, you still have to get the stud out of the bell housing. And that's a 15 millimeter, and you still only have the same amount of room. So by the time you pull that bracket off and try to get it pushed over enough to get a, a wrench on here with that same amount of room, man, I've been fighting this thing for a couple days. I work on it a little bit, and it starts to really make me mad. I just close the door and go home and take a shower and... Try it again the next day. Well, today I come in here. Uh, it's probably like going on six now. So I finally was able to get that bolt out of the back of the motor. Took me about an hour to get it out of there. I've tried every type of wrench you can imagine. You can't get a socket up in there with an extension. We went to Harbor Freight. We bought these fancy little wrenches thinking maybe we can get it from the bottom and get it out. No. Uh, we got the uh, gear ratchet wrench over there. That wouldn't work. What I ended up doing is taking one of my old 13s and one of my old 15s. These right here. And I just smashed them on the ground to make them flat as I can make them. Because if they have a curve... You're hitting things on the motor. If they're curved the other way, you're hitting things on the firewall. I tell you what, an engineer, yeah, they don't want you working on these trucks. That's the only thing I can conclude. So, that's been the hang up. Uh, trying to get that bolt out of there so we can move forward. Uh, we got, I got that bolt out now. Setting you up on the tripod. So anyways, I got that bolt out now. So what we have left, by the way, the torque converter bolts on these. You know, the olden days you took a little dust cover off the bottom of the transmission, you can get to all the torque converter bolts. Not on these things. You have to actually the easiest way I found to do it means we had to pull the exhaust manifold off because it's a little different gear, so we got to use the exhaust manifold for this truck. Otherwise, one of the sensors, the EGR or whatever, is going to throw the computer into a fit, so we have to use that exhaust manifold. And we'll get into exhaust manifolds on these in a minute, but uh, the easiest way you can get to this starter is you got to get the bolts off the bottom, but no matter if you get the bolts off the bottom, you don't have enough room to pull the starter out of the bell housing. The dipstick tube's in the way. It's, it's a job just to change the starter on this thing. So we pulled the exhaust manifold off of there, the dipstick tube out, 
We're able to get to the wires. You have to get the wires unhooked in order to get enough leadway because they got all the wires tied up as it goes, bolted to different brackets and stuff. And my goodness, man, could they have made it any harder? Chevy, I love you. I die hard Chevy. But y'all need to do some thinking on this stuff. Either that or you just don't want the average guy to work on it and you want to bill them out for thousands of hours to change a motor out or something. It's probably more the case. Uh, but, yeah. So then on the exhaust manifold, these LS motors have aluminum heads, right? So what happens with metal to aluminum is you use, they, first of all, they got different contracting rates for as heat. So if you try to take an exhaust manifold off of this thing when it's warm, you're guaranteed to break a stud off into the head. I did some research on YouTube and everybody that I seen that pulled the manifold off this broke studs. Well, this thing hasn't ran for since I pulled it in the shop and the donor motor hasn't ran since it got pulled out of the car and it's nice and cool. We're probably about 60 degrees, maybe 58 right now. So I was able to get in there and I started with a little eighth turn and then sprayed penetrating oil and tightened it back up. Backed it off a quarter, sprayed penetrating oil in there and tightened it back up. And I just worked them out. I didn't break not one stud out of the head. Uh, there's a bunch of videos on how to go and extract that broken stud that you're guaranteed to break on the back holes. Well, uh, I didn't have to uh, deal with any of that because we got them out. But uh, now that we got all that done, okay, we can go ahead and uh, we got to disconnect the uh, AC lot, the AC pump off of the motor, get it set to the side because we don't want to discharge the AC and all that. Uh, we got to get the wire harness out that runs down the right side of the motor underneath the, the bell housing, well not under the bell housing, but underneath the front of the pan and comes over to this side. And then there's one more ground on the back side that's really tough to get to. I'm gonna to wait to get that one until we actually get the motor pulled forward a little bit. Get some more room, because like I said, there is no room back there. The way they design these dashes, this motor's tucked back in there. You can't hardly get back there. But yeah, and then unbolt the motor mounts, the power steering lines, and this thing is out. Now that's just getting it out. Getting it back in is going to be fun. I think I know one bolt that's not going back in. Unless uh, we figure out a different way of doing it. Jesus. So anyways, that's where my nightmare has been. Uh, we're going to get her done one way or another. I mean, I, like I said, if I get to a point where it frustrates me, frustrates me too much, I just put the tools down and go home and come back and try it again. So... All right, guys, I think that should be about good enough for a video for this one. Uh, I filmed some more. I just haven't uploaded it. So we're going to put these two together. It should be a pretty good long video. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next. Uh, hey, we appreciate you guys all sticking with us on this off season. I know it's probably not what you guys subscribe to see. And we're going to get back to doing more of the race car stuff as soon as we get this out. Uh, I need to hurry up and try and get this done and out of here because... We're going to be in the snow pretty soon, and getting the race cars in the shop after it snows is going to be kind of tough, so we need to get her done and uh, get this truck back to Caitlin's mom, and she'll be a happy camper, and we can get back to working on some race cars, which will uh, make me a happier camper. They're much easier. I'd rather weld and cut and grind and do all that stuff all day than deal with some engineer that didn't want you working on it in the first place, but we're going to get it. Ain't, ain't, haven't seen one yet that uh, stopped me, and uh, this one sure as heck ain't. So have a good night, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.